All right, cool. Uh, what's your name? How old are you? And where Elizabeth are you from? Elizabeth Linares. I am 35 years old. And where are you originally from? Orange County. I was born in Palm Valley Hospital. And are you currently staying in uh, Pomona? Yes. How cool. How long have you been out here? Uh, a couple of years. I was 16. 16? Um, what is your current living situation right now? Homeless. Homeless? How long have you been homeless? About three years. Three? Yeah, it's kind of a long story. Well, that's what we're here to talk about. <laughs> um, tell me a little bit about your background. As a child? Oh, yeah. Like, Okay, so what was your life like uh, before becoming homeless? I was clean and sober for six years, about five, six years. And um, I was, you know, doing the whole family thing. I had my own car, my kids. I was seeing my kids, uh, well, my, the ones that I lost custody of back in 2016. I would see them on weekends and stuff. But um, I kind of stopped when they found out I had relapsed. Yeah. Um, how many kids do you have? I have four. Four, and you lost custody of all four kids? Yeah. Unfortunately. Well, <laughs> see, you with still, uh, my youngest, I got him back in eight months, but something happened between the father and I where they came back and took him from me. four months after I got him. Yeah. So that's got to be pretty hard, being homeless and, and, and dealing yeah, with that as after, well. Yeah, after they took my son for the second time, I kind of fell off pretty hard. And I found my way back. No. Are you still in contact with your any of them, any of your kids? My kids, yeah. My second, my second oldest and my youngest. That's good. What would you say uh, the hardest part about being homeless is? <laughs> Uh, just the money situation, you know, and having like not having a roof over your head or being able to shower when you want or or, or use the restroom when you want. It's just it's, it's not something that I'm used to, actually. You know? And when you're out here, um, how do you make your money? I also have some two drugs here and there. And if uh, if any of your family or your friends see this video, like, what's the message that you would like to tell them? This honestly, this is this is not the life that I want to live for the rest of my life. You know, like, I have family members telling me like that I like this and that I choose this over my children. That's not true. It's just. This time around, I don't have any help from any family member. I'm on my own, you know? And I never been on my own like that. So I always had my dad's help. So, no. It was just always a phone call away. But. How do you feel emotionally? And, and like, what's your like outlook on, on life? Emotion. <laughs> That's what you make it, you know? And you, go, and you have choices and decisions in life. And it's up to you if you want to, like, for me, it's just, if you want to better your life, it's better to do the good work to get to where you want to be in life. And for an addict, it, it's hard, but it, it's, it's possible, you know, if you really want it. Do you ever feel like like it's over or like that you've been defeated? Most of the time, I've been feeling like that lately. Like my life is just almost it's always gonna be over with. You know? Maybe it's just because I've been so mentally and emotionally drained. <laughs> What's been one of the scariest situations you've been in while you've been out here? Scariest situation. I was accused of something that I didn't do, and I honestly lost my life behind that. 
guns pointed at me. And I honestly thought my life was going to be over. And then... How did that feel? I mean, a gun pointed at you. It's scary, but I mean, it really is what it is, you know, like, I mean, it's just don't really like, give a fuck about you. There's no friends out here. There's no anybody. There's your real friend. They're all, we're all, they're all against each other, you know? And that's not something that I grew up around either. Like, I've always had that family support. And like I said this to my mom, I don't have any of that, but I have my children. And my girls are old enough to see and know things. And I've been doing a lot of thinking. I don't know, am I just going to a shelter or go to rehab? So when you're out here, um, how do you stay safe? Like I said, I have these three places that I call my little hideouts and stuff. Uh, nobody really knows about them, so myself. This one, I want to escape from all this and, and the, this crazy environment out here. But violence on here. When yeah, we, when you were younger, what was your uh, like your dream? Like, what did you want to grow up to be? A police officer or a nurse. I actually went to school for nursing, and I'm a CNA certified in OBN. But my criminal background is not only for nursing. Has has that background kind of like affected your your job? You getting a job and stuff? Yeah. So so going back to like uh, using meth, um, what led you to start using the drugs? Mm. I grew up a lot of violence in the home. You know, and I never had, I never felt that unconditional love for my mother. So I just felt like, I don't know, it's, it's hard to explain. I don't, I don't know, it's hard to explain how I felt, but. How old were you when you were, uh, did you, when you started using, first using? I was 14. 14 years old? That's I'm young. Still living in Orange County. Yeah. So, would you say, like, uh, the feelings that you felt were kind of like what steered you to using drugs? Was that with you, like, your family? Maybe it was just because of all the anger that I had towards my mother, I guess. But, um, Do you still talk to your parents? My dad, yeah, but not as much as I used to. My mom, no. Do you remember, like, the turning point when, when the drugs kind of started controlling your life and guiding you down this path? My early 20s. early 20s sure. have you ever tried to get clean i've been clean before for like five years and then have you went to rehab before was that with rehab i completed two rehab programs do you feel like that helped you long term yeah in the meetings in the fellowship narcotics and all this and then what, what keeps you going each day, like, through these hard times? Like, what are some of the positive memories that you hold on to? The times that I had with my significant other when I was two months over. And my children. You know, my kids kind of, my, my daughters kind of, like, motivate me and, like, like, you know, push me a little bit you know, to, like, Doing better and going back to the lifestyle that I, 
I had before all this. What's your your plan to get off the streets? Like I said, I'm really thinking about going to their rehab or shelter or maybe a civil living. Either one, either one of those three options. <coughs> yeah, he is. <coughs> See? Do you have any skills or talents? Yes. Of course. Yeah. Do you yeah. sing? What was that? Do you know how to sing? If I know what, I'm sorry. Okay. It's all right. I can block that out. I'll say, well, my question was, uh, do you have any skills or talents? Uh-huh. A couple of them. Thanks to my dad. I know a lot about construction. This is my father. I know a lot about plumbing. I stayed at a plumber for nine years. Yo. It's all right. Come on, man. And then if you can go back and give a younger version of yourself some advice, what kind of advice would you give yourself? That's a good question. I don't know. I've always been hard on myself. And hard on myself. For a lot of years. And that has a lot to do with a stillborn that I had. In 2000. And then for, for anybody, anybody watching right now, um, what advice would you give to the younger people who might be in a similar situation or heading down this path? Not even worth it. This life, this is not a life. No life for anyone. I don't wish this on even my worst enemy. No, it's, it's a struggle out here. And people die every day. Every day. Would you say it's pretty dangerous out here for the women? Yeah, especially if you're alone. And then, have you? Um, what is some like scary things that you've witnessed out here? Other than what happened to you? I see a lot of violence, a lot of deaths, close friends. Um. I never was around it, but just there was this video of a close friend that was recorded. They recorded him when they were hurting him. Burning him? Was that out here? Local? Oh, wow. That's pretty scary. On the reservoir. And um, yeah. I stopped because that video. I don't understand how there's people out there with no heart in their soul. Wholehearted and cool. I send that video to the mother and the family members. <laughs> Pretty fucked up. And but then, uh, I never witnessed anything close up. Yeah. And then for anybody that's, uh, is there anybody that you would like to, um, Give a message to anyone that if like who would that be like somebody that you want to see this video and something you want to tell them if they see this video just my daughters you know and what do you want to tell your daughters it's not worth it and they're at that age where they want to try new things you know one of them was using knobs for a little bit actually both of them for a little yeah, they're short, at, they're at that time. time in their life, right? Where they're and I wanna that's about it. Like we nothing else, you know. But I always tell them that they're better. They don't. They're better. They're better than this. They don't. They don't. They deserve better in life. You know that they're gonna be something in life. 
that they're not going to be like me. They shouldn't follow my footsteps. And in, in case um, somebody does want to send some blessings your way, do you have a, a cash shop or anything that you want to go ahead and send out there? No, I have. I mean, I do, but I don't have my phone number. Remember it. I just reopen an account. And you can you can send it to me, and I and I can attach it too. Um, what about? Um, are you okay with us putting this on like YouTube? Just kind of help spread awareness. Sure. All right. Sweet. Thank you.